seen many, many changes over our lifetime. But this particular change that has taken place in our retirement years has been the most devastating of any change we've had to go through. Mars Hill, a long forested mountain rises 1,700 feet from the flat potato fields of Arusta County, Maine. So far east, it's the first place in the continental U.S. to see the sunrise. With the decline in potato farming, the staple crop of Arusta County, many individuals in this community have been forced to seek work outside of town. However, some have now returned home with plans to settle into the quiet, peaceful life they once knew. My father returned from Regina, Saskatchewan in 1914 with $400 uh, and started farming here on this 200 acre farm uh, and uh, married my mother in 1918 and uh, continued on owning this farm until 1960, at which time I purchased it from the family. <clears throat> Our purpose and intent in, in living here was to enjoy the benefits of the farm, a nice secluded area, uh, quiet, peaceful, where we could uh, enjoy the birds, enjoy the f the animals in the forest and wooded area and enjoy the farm life. In the winters here, silence is, the silence that's here is you, you wonder if your head's working, you wonder if your ears are working because you hear there's nothing, there's nothing. So you almost have to make a sound to make sure that your ears are, are, are functioning. Um, you can hear the snow fall on your hair or on your jacket. Um, birds flying overhead, you can hear their wings flap. <laughs> we have children, we have three children, uh, 13, 10, and 9, and we have a, a, a great concern in the investment that we put into this house, this property, and we don't we don't want to move we we want to stay here i i had mentioned that i don't want to move um <clears throat> the words i said were hey the next place i'm going is i mean you'll be taking me out in a pine box in 2001 the upc wind power company came to mars hill prospecting for a possible wind farm site I think anyone that has lived in Arusta County, Maine, uh, has a, a pretty good understanding of the relative economy here. Uh, we are a poor area of, of the state of Maine, and Maine in general is a poor area of the country. So uh, I guess you could say we're among the poorest of the poor in a sense. Uh, when you look at a project that will bring significant tax revenue uh, to your community, I think you, you do have to set up and take notice of that. I think you'd be narrow narrow-minded and closed-minded if you didn't do that. UPC Wind uh, came to us and uh, it was actually a, uh, a contractor that they had hired that, that came to us. You know, he was the first, he was the front man, so to speak, for the, for the project. Uh, he was a, uh, had worked for the U.S. government, in, he was a soil scientist and uh, environmentalist, you know, environmental activist, and um, he was the one that brought the project to the town. And uh, you know, then he he spoke with a lot of the local people and came to the town council, and you know, basically got the council's blessing to you know to go forward with the project. 
Several families would move back to Mars Hill, buying land not far from the Boyds on Mountain Road, which is located at the foot of Mars Hill. Some of the families, the Todds, the Copperwaiths, and the Tardies, have saved for years to build a home, some to raise children, others to retire. He always wanted to come back, you know, because we both were from Prescott, born and raised, and we moved to Connecticut when we got married. He was already there, but he came back. And uh, after he retired, we wanted to come back, and we did move to South China, but he still wanted to come here, so he's back. And this was our retirement home. This is where we put everything, we put everything, our life savings, everything into the home. And we figured this is where we'll really live out our remaining days. And now it's pretty doubtful. We came back, we found, or I found employment uh, with the local uh, processing plant. And uh, we moved up to Northern Maine, back to Northern Maine, back home. According to town officials, no formal meetings were held to introduce the project coming to town. It was felt these meetings would not be utilized and most information would be obtained through word of mouth in the small community. A public hearing would be held for individuals to voice their questions and concerns. However, the town council had already given UPC their approval. The first public hearing was um, an information session uh, for the public that was offered only um, as a question and answer period. Uh, it was made very clear that um, the decision had already been made, that the, the, the approval was uh, confirmed uh, from the, the planning board and the town council that the windmills were coming. During that evening, there was a gentleman that stood up and asked the question. He said, uh, and we don't know, I can't remember who it was, and we can't pull it from the tapes. He said that he lived very close to the project and was very concerned about what type of noise would be emitted from, from them. Um, and uh, UPC uh, representatives, um, uh, Peter, uh, Peter Gish and um, Rick Tyler. Rick Tyler would have been the uh, public relations uh, manager. Um, carried on a conversation with, with the gentleman that um, that these windmills um, were basically uh, aerodynam aerodynamically uh, silent. The sound generated by the turbine um, is such that you have to be within about 500 feet. Will these wind towers make noise? A common question found on the UPC website, which answers that virtually no mechanical noise from these turbines can be heard. If you are near a turbine, you may hear the sound of the wind and the swooshing sound made by the slowly turning blade parting the air. If the wind is blowing, the background noise of the wind in the trees is all you are likely to hear. You will not be able to hear any noise at all at the foot of the mountain. Between 2003 and 2005, four families built new homes at the base of Mars Hill with assurance that these wind turbines would not be heard. However, during the time, a study by resource systems engineer Scott Bodwell concluded this. The results of the preliminary analysis indicate a potential exists for the wind farm to generate sound levels at or above main DEP residential and quiet area limits at several nearby parcels. The study was included in the UPC permit. On June 23, 2003, the town council and town manager signed off on the permit application for UPC wind to construct 28 400-foot wind turbines on top of Mars Hill. Town manager Ray Mercero told the Bangor Daily News that he doesn't know whether officials saw the information included. He was quoted saying, I don't know if they saw it, but it was in the permit. Not everyone, including myself, saw everything in the permit. So when they started the blasting, at first it was maybe a little exciting, uh, <laughs> in a strange sort of way. Um, but then they hit the peak, uh, the northern peak, and um, they literally blew it away. <gasps> there it is. Whoa! Um, they chose one section of the mountain that they felt for some reason they had to put a windmill there. 
and it wasn't conducive for putting a windmill there. So they blasted and blasted um, and just blew the side of the mountain off. And um, it happens to be the part of the mountain that um, we grew up on and were used to hiking up and over. Um, so it was very personal and it felt like a, I don't know, a, a violation. Um, a family member was being hurt. So it was very difficult for our family to watch the, um, the mountain being, being just blown to bits and with no way of ever being able to put that mountain back together. So knowing that um, the mountain that my father grew up on um, for 70, 73 years unchanged was now forever changed. Last night was brutal. That was really loud last night. When the alarm went off this morning, you could hear them as, and as loud as the music was on the radio. It's not quiet anymore. And you don't see any more wildlife. And that was one thing we got a big kick out of. Like we'd go down the street down here just for a ride when we were building. And one day I counted 17 moose. I haven't seen one since those windmills went in. We don't see birds. We don't see, you know, we used to come home and the car lights would pick up shiny eyes out in the field and a deer would pop up. It was laying down for the night. You don't see that. We haven't seen any wildlife whatsoever. Many of us have lived here all of our lives and we're not characterized by lying or fabricating um, stories. stories. Um, and, and most people in town, I, I believe, uh, know our character. Uh, and the character of our of our neighbors. From everything I've heard, and and uh, as I say, I live here, and I've not driven around the mountain to even see what the sound is like out there. Um, from what I've heard, and knowing the people that are there, they have a, a concern and a very legitimate concern. They have a, a a noise problem. Mostly, they seem to be worse at night. And I'll get up, take medication, and you could go back to bed. The only comfort you get is if you can fall right back to sleep, which was never a problem. And now I can't get back to sleep because you hear the boom, 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 like sneakers in a dryer, or you hear the humming steady, like a motor running, and it works in your nerves. It increased, creates a great deal of stress for Perrin and, um, and, uh, and the family, and it shows in, in, in our relationships within the home um, and, and at work, um, and it's, it's difficult. Um, to help people understand why that would be, but um, the disruption of the mills, um, if, it, if it causes loss of sleep and uh, frustration at varying points of the day, it carries over into your relationships and uh, we've certainly seen that in our home and many of our neighbors are seeing it in their homes as well. Healing Hearts Ranch is a therapeutic facility in Mars Hill where children with special needs can interact with farm animals. Animal assisted therapy has many benefits for at-risk children with a wide range of special needs including behavioral issues, attention deficit disorder, abuse issues, depression, anxiety, relationship problems, and communication needs. Dr. Nina Pierpont, a pediatrician who has written extensively on the health impacts of wind turbines says, when turning with the sun behind them, Turbine blades cast moving shadows across the landscape and houses, creating a strobe effect within houses that can be difficult to block out. 
Some people get dizzy, lose their balance, or become nauseated. Pierpont estimates that people most likely to be susceptible to symptoms include those with migraine disorder, those with age-related problems with inner ear function, and children with disabilities, especially autism. The strobe effect also has the potential to trigger seizures in people with epilepsy. The residents of Mars Hill face many battles ahead in resolving their situation, but according to many, the best way to resolve them would have been from the start. Community involvement, thorough education, and third-party documentation are all needed to ensure successful placement of these wind turbines. If the town had at least taken a straw vote so that people could have voted on whether they wanted the windmills or they don't, even if the vote didn't count for anything, at least the town would have known the way the townspeople felt. And I myself would have at least been able to have said, well, this is something the town people wanted, I guess I can live with it. But because there was no straw vote taken, nothing that, nothing to indicate the way the townspeople felt. That's where we feel we've been shortchanged. Now we, uh, the town wants to buy a new truck. We all have to vote on the new truck, but we couldn't vote on a project of this magnitude, which seems ridiculous. While we are producing some things, whether it's hydro, whether it's wind, whether it's solar, whatever, and I think those are all responsible ways for us to look to go. I really do. I, I think that the location of these are, um, you know, I, I think that's a little questionable. You know, I think they need to be in areas that, that, that don't negatively impact people. Like a firearm, a gun. The, the gun isn't necessarily bad unless you do something wrong with it. Where they put these, how they put them in, they, they, they did a lot of mistakes and they should be comp people around here should be compensated for it. One of the errors that this town made was not educating themselves as quickly as possible on not only the, the positive aspects of windmills, but the negative aspects of windmills. Um, there was a small group of folks who did try to fight uh, early on. Unfortunately, one of, the, one of the errors I think that was made early on was that one person had all the information. One person had all the knowledge, and, um, or one or two. And the group didn't have the knowledge or that education so they could stand on their own two feet. And what happened at the town meetings was that those one or two people would get up to ask questions and the, um, uh, the corporation and the town knew who those people were and either wouldn't call on them or quickly diffuse the situation and had them sit down. Um, everybody needs to be educated. Um, if you've got a group of people, anyone that's going to be under uh, 3,000 feet, anyone as far away as a mile or a mile and a half needs to be educated on the negative aspects of windmills um, so that they can speak for themselves and um, stay together as a group and, and, sh and have a united front. There's a lot of trust. I mean, the days of the handshake and the days of the verbal agreement are gone. This is 2007, it doesn't exist anymore. And we live among excellent neighbors, people who are severely affected themselves, and many I say many uh, are, are considering selling the properties here. That's how serious the situation is. It uh, has, uh, meaning it, the windmills, and the development thereof here in the town of Mars Hill have uh, drastically changed and dashed our 
hopes and dreams of of living that solitude that we sought. Seen many, many changes over our lifetime. But this particular change that has taken place in our retirement years has been the most devastating of any change we've had to go through. 